Welcome to the fourth episode of Ericsson's 5G Talks. This time, we're considering the impact of 5G on the consumer experience and how proactive telco operators can use this to their advantage. Customer expectations are running higher than ever, wanting more now, no waiting, no fuss. And when everything is delivered on demand, it takes something rather special to get people's attention. Now, that is something 5G can easily do. It seems the increased connection provided by 5G is triggering an increase in innovation, which is helping telco operators deliver more engaging customer experiences. And after years of flat revenues, the top 20 providers are now starting to see growth again. More 5G subscriptions and rises in average revenue per user. So is this the start of a 5G growth zone? Well, today we'll talk about how proactive telco operators can use 5G to switch customers from unlimited connectivity packages to a more value-based pricing mindset. We'll discuss how this can help to position and prepare for growth through better customer experiences, reduced costs, increased capacity and the chance to develop more exciting propositions, collaborations and opportunities. I'm Angela Lamont, and today I'm joined by Ericsson's Patrick Sirval, Head of Strategic Marketing Insights, and Hans Hammer, Head of Networks Business Strategy, are experts in 5G. Later on, we'll also be joined by Magnus Björkman, CEO at Tension Group, Jean-Marie Culpin, CMO at Orange Europe, and Terence Lai, Vice President of Consumer Products and Partnership from Singtel, to tell us how they're already finding creative ways to delight customers using the sheer speed and capacity of 5G. And remember, the Ericsson team are ready right now to answer any burning questions you might have, so just tell us your thoughts in the chat window. So, Patrick, can you tell us what is likely to happen to 5G in the market over the next few years? Yes, thank you, Angela. And uh, what we're seeing right now is a tremendous increase of 5G subscriptions in the world. Right now, we just passed the 1 billion mark of 5G subscriptions worldwide. Uh, we believe we're actually going to hit 1.5 billion end of this year. So the speed is tremendous. Um, by 2028, 4.6 billion people uh, or users will have 5G in the world. Um, and that, of course, will change a lot because dominating technology will be 5G and everyone will go around with a smartphone having 5G capabilities in a few years' time. And that especially happens in, in mature markets. And that's where we see the big uptake right now. But interesting enough, India is leading the way here right now. It's the fastest growing region with 5G and will continue to be so for a while. And they use a lot of data down in India, which is really interesting because that spills over also on how we use uh, data in different ways uh, over the world. So there certainly seems to be plenty of scope in the 5G market. Hans, can you tell me about some of the benefits for the telco operators and, and who benefits the most? Yeah, I think we, we see now a, a clear trend uh, among the operators that are really adopting 5G and deploying 5G and, and where 5G is taking off. Uh, and if you look at the 20 most proactive uh, operators globally, we see that they have a revenue, uh, overall revenue growth of 7%. So, so that's really uh, saying that 5G delivers a different experience, but it also shows that uh, people are pay, uh, prepared to, to pay more. And that is very much in line with our studies, saying that third of users, consumers, uh, are prepared to pay up to 20% extra for 5G. So, so I think that's really promising, and we see that now being delivered. And then it's going to be interesting to see the next steps that these operators will take. So they're prepared to pay extra, but for new experiences. Patrick, what sort of new experiences are we talking about for the consumers? Yeah, I think there's a lot of, of them that uh, consumers are looking for. Uh, of course, underlying all of that is a better speed. Um, that gives a better experience, uh, just having that availability of, of good performance in your network uh, for these users. Uh, but then there's a lot of different services that are now popping up. Gaming is one of those uh, where end users will start to use that, um, not just at home, but also on the go. Um, we see video, of course, video continues to be the main uh, attraction 
tractor, I would say, for mobile services. 70% uh, of all the traffic that we see in networks are from video, and that will continue and evolve towards new types of video, augmented reality, and those type of services long term. What do you think are the best messages to encourage users to move to 5G, Patrick? Yeah, I think it's a combination of things. Uh, uh, operators right now are doing a lot of good exploration of different uh, models. Um, they are combining both the basic connectivity with more service level agreement or service uh, uh, combination of things where they add um, music streaming, they add gaming, they add different types of things on top of the packages and it becomes more attractive. And if, if users want to have more data they would move up the value chain uh, on the offerings and that would also lead to using 5G. So consumers are starting to see the value of 5G, especially in, in, in many markets where you haven't had that good connectivity on 4G, it's going uh, quicker up to 5G as well. Now, of course, we are in a period of change and in periods like this, the wait and see option is always one that should be considered. But Hans, do you think in this particular case that might be one of the riskier strategies for telcos? Yeah, I think uh, wait and see is, is probably the, not the best uh, option at the moment. Uh, because moving into 5G, first of all, you need to build the networks and you need to really think through what kind of offerings uh, you want to address and what kind of consumer segments you want to address. And of course, that combination of that takes time and the first movers will have a big advantage in the market. So, so it's, uh, we really urge our, our customers to now be proactive with 5G and as we have seen in the market, the proactive uh, operators are actually increasing their ARPU. And that of course allows the new experiences for the consumers. Patrick, what do you think will be those premium experiences that people will pay more for, not just now but also in the future? Yeah, I think it's uh, one thing that stands out a lot and that's uh, all kinds of augmented, uh, extended reality type of services. Those things will be there. It takes a while. We started just to see a, a few of the big ones announcing new headsets coming up and so on. So of course there's a lot of expectations but it definitely is, is going to be a big change for, for many when those are, are becoming commonplace. Um, but I also would say that, that uh, just using your, your um, um, 5G phone um, in, in different ways, using gaming, using those type of new services. It's actually going to be a lot of those premium services that, that they will pay extra for. Thank you. So that's what the Ericsson team think, but what about those who are already in the 5G growth zone? So first, let's talk to Magnus Björkman. Magnus is CEO at Tension Group and co-founder at Onsite Sport, and he's a bit of a 5G trailblazer. He's already tapping into all three ways to differentiate, speed, tiering, personalised add-ons and content aggregation. Thanks for joining us, Magnus. Thank you. Can you tell us more about how you're defining and revolutionising sport and particularly fan engagement, because I know gamification is a really strong focus with you on 5G. Yes, yes, it is. Um, and it's, it's part of our mission to, to turn all current and uh, new subscribers into loyal fans. And we do that by game, uh, using games combined with sports uh, uh, in many different areas. Uh, so, uh, and we see a huge potential growth uh, for the telcos in the operation market to go for this. Uh, so Tension is using the um, patent technology uh, where we mixed uh, multiple cameras, 3D viewing, uh, something we call time slice videos and bring that all into a gamified environment. So by doing that we redefining the future of sports and bringing, by bringing also back the audience uh, to the stadiums. So what new types of customer experience does the 5G growth zone enable? Uh, it's enabled the uh, it's a completely new gamified in inspired uh, interactive platform. So and by doing that we also think that we can attract the said generation which is uh, very important uh, especially for the next generation of, uh, of sport experiences. So uh, and what we also give them is the, the, uh, the possibility to become your own director and have the freedom of choice. 
So you can select and do whatever you want, when you want to do it, inside the application. You've been offering personalised add-ons, you've been getting the news out of the team ahead of the others. What technology have you been using to enable that? We use uh, slicing uh, to do this, uh, and, and by combining different slices uh, for different needs, uh, we uh, then can aggregate the, cult, uh, the, the content that we need uh, and the consumer wants. Uh, and it could be that you select a special uh, camera for a certain view, uh, or it could be uh, that you want to watch from the helmet camera of the goalie, for example. And what type of results have you been seeing and how are you measuring the success of it? I think it's measured by the number of fans we can attract, of course, and then we, we put on a subscription model on this, so we also know that the clubs can earn from uh, the number of fans that are, are paying to the club. So it's, uh, I think it's an interesting and new model. It's a new model for this area, but for in the gaming industry we've been used for different kind of subscription models for, for many, many years. Do you think right now there's enough energy and investment going into the B2C version of 5G as opposed to the business-to-business -business side? No, I think there's a huge potential to put more, more effort into uh, do business to consumer things. I think that's where you actually will have a rapid growth, and especially when you approach the gaming, gaming generations and uh, start mixing these different technologies. Being in the gaming industry, that customer experience is absolutely critical for you. Yes. What kind of feedback have you had about it? We have uh, great feedback, uh, and uh, I think also it's, it's, it's a great feedback from um, being at Mobile World Congress. Uh, displaying this, for example, has been uh, super great, uh, giving us a, a lot of good feedback of what we need to do to enhance this even further. But it feels that, uh, yeah, by mixing these industries and, and uh, going forward, it's going to be a super interesting future. Thank you, Magnus. Now, another organisation that's embracing the opportunities of 5G is Orange, and I'm delighted to welcome Jean-Marie, who's CMO for Orange Europe, to tell us more about how the business is encouraging its customers to move to higher-value subscriptions. Hello, Jean-Marie. You're already promoting tariffs in the market today, but looking ahead, what can you see in the future, and will customers be willing to pay a premium for it? Hello. Uh, so I'm delighted to be uh, with you today. Um, basically, you've got to understand that we did introduce 5G in three different modes in our different operations. I begin by uh, Poland and um, Slovakia. Uh, Poland, uh, first of all, uh, we introduced that in our premium offers. So in fact, it was uh, an effect of the marketing mix, of the premium mix, so that only the customer that took the more high-end offers could have the 5G. It was the same for Romania. Uh, but if I take Slovakia, for example, it was uh, sold through a specific bundle. It was a data option. So it was available only if the customer took the data option. So in, in both cases, it's either a pure Delta RPU, like in Slovakia, or it's a, a change of the marketing mix. You attire more customers on the high end of her, like we, we've done both in Poland and in, uh, in Romania. In Spain, it was quite different because we introduced it only on the orange brand. You know, we have three brands in Spain, so we did not introduce uh, the 5G on our low end brand like uh, Simio on the middle end uh, brand Jastel, but only for Orange, but there for all the portfolio of Orange. And then uh, we've got to notice also that it all depends on the spectrum availability. Do we have uh, the C band or not? Do we have 3.5 uh, uh, gigahertz or not? And, and then it will also change the day we have uh, SA, uh, standalone uh, offers that will be available with all the benefits that will be uh, uh, bought by the, the 5G SA. Now, you've heard some of the forecast adoption rates from our Ericsson Mobility Report. Are you starting to see a shift in adoption from 4G to 5G with customers in your business? 
typically uh, it all comes with the sales of equipment, the sales of devices. Uh, at the moment, the rate in our footprint overall blended uh, is 70% of our sellout, which is 5G devices, 70% 70. Uh, in some countries, it's even uh, around 80%. So, so it's really uh, significant, and we, we've seen a, a dramatic increase in the, in the last year. And that's also the impact that we see in our equipment revenue, beyond the service revenue, of, of course. Uh, and, and it helps us beyond the smartphone market, which may seem uh, a little in decrease overall. Uh, we see still uh, an increase in our equipment revenue, thanks to this uh, high end sales with the, with the 5G. What we can see also is that now uh, the game is for the remaining 30% and it's on the low end uh, devices, which are less high end smartphone. Uh, on this democratization, of course, we discussed that with our uh, uh, suppliers uh, of devices on, uh, and it's important also that we see that in many of our operations, we intend, and we already uh, disclosed that, to uh, close the 3G networks. Uh, so this uh, sunset, we call it sunset of this 3G network, it will occur. But for this, we have to uh, give an alternative proposal to our uh, customers who so will be delighted to sell them some uh, new 5G devices that will be compatible with Volti on uh, all the, the voice offer once we've got uh, the 3G network uh, cut off. Of course, everyone is on a quest for the customer experience of the future that customers are willing to pay for. How do you see this evolving? What I see on the customer experience is that uh, there are several uh, insights and several tries that we've done, uh, beginning by uh, cloud gaming. In Belgium, we launched uh, 5G, it was last year. Uh, and we launched it with, uh, also with a partnership, uh, we'll quote Microsoft, okay, it was Microsoft, it could have been someone else with the Xbox, but it was with the cloud gaming promise. So 5G, and we did demonstrate in, our, in all our shops in Belgium and also in, a, in some pop-up store, the benefit of 5G at the moment of the launch with cloud gaming, but also we are interested by VR, and we are demonstrating VR in some oper operation, and you know, Coming soon, uh, another uh, uh, equipment that is uh, doing the buzz since a couple of days uh, on AR, uh, the new uh, Apple uh, equipment. And on, on, on we believe that uh, beyond cloud gaming on VR, AR could be uh, something that could make the difference for uh, uh, the, the, the improvement of the experience on, on 5G for the, for the consumer. We also tried to uh, have our customer seeing the difference for their energy consumption. So we have included that in our app. You know our app, it's called My Orange, Orange et Moi in French, uh, which is for all the care elements, uh, all the, the elements and the bill, what you pay, to, but also uh, you can measure your energy cons consumption. So uh, we've tried that uh, on here. The, the key thing is not only to have customers interested because they're curious, but also to have that on the long run, uh, having the customer uh, keeping that experience. Uh, Can you talk us through how you've added value in terms of great customer experiences for your customers? Uh, clearly, in some countries, because we had no frequencies, we did begin with the DSS, the dynamic spectrum sharing. It was certainly not worse than 4G. It was better. But clearly, beyond the DSS, we've got to go further. We've got to go with the C-band, with the 3.5 gigahertz, because it's better, because uh, the throughput is better, it's more stable. Uh, you've got uh, less uh, balance with the, with the 4G. So first, do, going from DSS to 3.5 gigahertz, and then going to a standalone 5G today is uh, mainly NSA, but very soon it will be coming in our operations in uh, uh, 5G SA, standalone, and here we will also benefit from not only slices, which are also beneficial for the B2B, it can be also uh, something where we can have uh, slices dedicated to, to the B2C, but also whatever the slice, there will be a better customer experience through the latency, through uh, the, the time uh, of uh, interaction with the customer, 
typically for the gaming, for the cloud gaming, it can be a benefit for the end user, for the core gamers. And what areas are critical to get right if we're to build and scale demand for higher value subscriptions? Typically, it all comes from what the customer sees. What he sees is what he has in his hand. It begins by the device. So it begins by the 5G device. Then the frequencies, because the frequencies, it's the, the critical part that allows the, the network uh, to work. Then the operation, the quality of service, the optimization. But I would also quote the fact that uh, even if you got the device, the frequencies, on the optimization, uh, the standalone is still a question in order that you got the better latency so that you can get overall the final real benefit of the real 5G. Now, Orange will be one of the partners for the upcoming Olympic Games. Will you provide new 5G services to consumers and how are you going to differentiate your offerings during the Games? The Games in Paris, in 2024, there will be a success. And it will be also a success uh, with Orange because there will be 5G, there will be uh, 5G uh, everywhere where we will have uh, stadiums. We will also have uh, uh, private uh, 5G networks uh, in uh, some uh, places. Uh, but it's important that we care about uh, uh, all the visitors that will be coming. So we've got an offer for our visitors, uh, let's say uh, American uh, uh, travelers. Uh, it's called Orange Holidays. Uh, but uh, this Orange Holidays offer, obviously, it will uh, be improved. Uh, there is no uh, mystery that uh, uh, these uh, customers uh, coming from overseas, they will deserve 5G. So it will be obviously uh, part of uh, what we will offer. But also, there should be uh, an appropriate capacity for all the customers that will be in the different stadium. It's important that uh, there is no uh, shortage of capacity, that uh, uh, people that can uh, both be in the stadium and uh, having a 360 view also by uh, following uh, whatever uh, matches, uh, uh, races, uh, by having all the information on their smartphone. So it's absolutely important. Uh, the TV experience also uh, uh, will be uh, part of the uh, uh, overall uh, offer, so TV, you, you know, we've got Orange TV for our customer, but it will be uh, expanded with, uh, uh, with the uh, TV broadcast of the uh, Olympic Games, uh, because it has to be. On uh, all of this, it will be also with uh, equipment, so as I, uh, uh, I'm sure uh, I uh, want to mention, there will be also equipment that will be part of the overall offer with the smartphone, uh, with the uh, uh, earphone, uh, and also with the watches, uh, but uh, you will see, I cannot disclose everything, uh, and it uh, will be uh, made available in due time. Thank you, Jean-Marie. And last, but by no means least, our last guest is Terence Lai, Vice President of Consumer Products and Partnership from Singtel. Now, as you may know from our previous talks, Singtel was one of the world's first telco operators to deploy 5G network slicing at a major event to demonstrate the commercial opportunities of differentiated connectivity services. Terence, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I think we first tested with network slicing on our F1 event. What happened is that we all know that in the F1 event, the place is always congested with a lot of uh, audience watching the live event. We created a car such that any of our cast user that is on this uh, F1 event would be able to watch the video clearly and smoothly because we put a special slice on them. So any of our 5G customer who is actually our cast spot pack customers will be able to put on the stream such that during the period, even when it's congested around the F1 pit or F1 area where there's a lot of customers, they are able to watch the video smoothly. That is very restricted to the F1 event. And then we move beyond the F1 event to work up to the whole Singapore uh, location. That means everywhere in Singapore, as long as you have a cast sports pack that have World Cup pack, you are able to watch the World Cup on a special slice that we created such that you have priority no matter what situation or whatever location you actually have a very smooth viewing of the whole World Cup 
And that's what we did with the network slicing uh, last year. Now, when it comes to subscription costs, would you say there's an increased level of experience with those using the premium subscription versus standard? How do they differentiate themselves? I think uh, the way we try with network slicing is not so much on subscribing to network slicing or not subscribing to network slicing because as an end user, the experience is what count. So what we do is that we always bundle network slicing with the experience with our services, especially content. In both the F1 and the World Cup case, you notice that we did not charge people for network slicing. But what we do is that we entice people to subscribe to our cast sports pack, whether it's F1 or video pack, and they automatically put on a special slice for them. So the subscription is more on the content more than the network slicing capability. So how well did the app perform when considering fan engagement and feedback during the race? Do you feel, based on the feedback that you received, that it added greater value to the overall experience? I think uh, from the feedback from all those who attend the F1 event, because there's a lot of viewer, those and the special slides, because they subscribe to our cast content pack, actually enjoy the smooth streaming of the video, especially those uh, live broadcast of the F1, but not just the event, uh, live broadcast of the event, but they are able to use their phone to share videos and picture easily because they are on the top priority in the F1 event. Uh, when it comes to the World Cup, the feedback is good because customer feels that they can watch a very high definition of the World Cup broadcast no matter where they are using our mobile network. And that could make a difference between the experience of a network slice. And to us, experience is what we are charging customers and not so much a technical network slice because customers don't understand network slice. But to the customers, the better experience when watching a nice video without any interruption is how they enjoy our 5G network slicing. Can you explain how you did it and what tech was needed to make that happen? What we did is that we used the network sizing capability within the network core system and we use it together with the radio resource partition capability with the network to ensure that not just the back end is uh, sliced but also the radio part is sliced such that customer experience the end-to-end -end, uh, rich experience, smooth viewing experience of our video apps through network slicing. So how did network slicing affect the overall viewing experience? I think network slicing gave us the capability to ensure that customer who is paying for the premium content, like I say in our cast app, has a smooth streaming. That means basically uninterrupted, whether the place is congested with a lot of customers fighting for resources, or in an area where the bandwidth is given to you, especially because other people don't have the priority. And when you have this capability, you are actually able to smooth very high definition and the video is not interrupted. Well, from what we've learned, I think it's safe to say that we are now in the 5G growth zone. Thank you so much to all our expert contributors, Terence, Jean-Marie and Magnus. But before we go, time for a few final thoughts. Hans, from what we've just heard from Terence, uh, network slicing is playing uh, an important role in meeting the changing needs of consumers by offering telco operators um, more speed and flexibility at scale. Is it suitable for all organisations, would you say? Yeah, I think we, we see now the uh, early adopters of, of 5G and slicing. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Singtel is, is one of the first. Uh, it gives them a uh, possibility to differentiate and, and differentiate in, in, on different levels. So differentiate the service offering for different kind of experience for if you are a gamer or if you are uh, watching a lot of YouTube or doing video conferencing for example. You, you need different type of experience and different uh, networks, uh, connectivity. Uh, we also see the, the differentiation within one user. That, uh, as Magnus was talking about earlier, that they he mix the gaming with short, like real-time experience, with video streaming. That requires uh, differentiation within one user. What kind of network resources you 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 need to have? 
And the third dimension is differentiating, differentiating the offering compared to your, your competitor in the market, so the operator between the operators. And that is like the third dimension where uh, network slicing can provide benefits. So we've heard a lot about network slicing, but Patrick, are there other technologies that can help to propel telcos into the 5G growth zone? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, apart from, from what Hans talks about um, and the standard 5G capabilities that, that uh, on latency and speed, um, there are a number of, of, of additional things like edge computing that comes into play. We have the whole cloud um, capabilities that also is, of course, important. Um, but I would say one more thing that really can change and become a game changer, and we already heard a lot about it you know, in the news the late, uh, last couple of, of months is of course AI, artificial intelligence, and add that on top of, of new types of devices, 5G, and we have a fantastic mix of capabilities that will definitely change a lot of things. So we've seen that the early adopter consumer markets, those who are heavy users of video streaming content, are driving this economic growth through their willingness to pay for new premium experiences. But what needs to happen, Hans, to make this into the majority? Yeah, so, so uh, we have uh, now deployed a lot of non-standalone networks, as we have been 5G networks. Uh, slicing is enabled by launching standalone. So uh, then for that is also needed the, the TDD midband, as we talked about earlier, but also getting that uh, ubiquitous coverage with the low band. Uh, so, so that is like essential to, to build these networks. And then you get the slicing, which is then creating different experiences in the network and you connect those to different applications. So the, the, that technology is, is now start to happen and, and coming into play. So I think that, there are a lot of opportunities going forward for, for uh, mobile operators to, to actually differentiate the service offering and, and increase the revenues. Well, I think that's a great place to end. And let's continue to invest in the 5G SA network deployment to make all of this happen. Thank you, Hans. So we'll hear more about this step change growth and the next wave of business models and experiences in episode five. So please join us for that. But for now, I know that many of you will have plenty more questions about 5G, the need to deliver exceptional customer experiences and much more besides. Well, that's exactly what the gurus at Ericsson are here for, for the next 30 minutes. So please keep your questions coming. Just pop them in the chat window. Thanks again to all our guests today, Patrick, Hans, Magnus, Jean-Marie and Terence, and of course all of you for taking the time to join us. I hope you're now feeling inspired to explore the different experiences you can offer your customers using 5G. I'll see you next time.